Hey nesters, welcome back to Nesting Haven. Today we are checking out Goodwill, doing some thrift shopping, looking for some interesting cheery home decor that I can either add to my own home or maybe flip for a little bit of a profit here on my YouTube channel, live sales, or in my Etsy shop. So let's go ahead and check it out and see what Goodwill had today. I really like that chicken toothbrush holder or knife holder. I'm not really sure what it was supposed to be for, but you did see there were some chips. Again, chips on these vintage salt and pepper shakers. Those are really neat. They appear to be hand painted as well. They had a lot of really nice mug sets in the Goodwill today. I typically just kind of mix and match my mugs. I think a lot of people do that, but it was interesting to see so many sets. That one there, the Country Memory Stoneware, was very pretty. If I was to pick up a set, that definitely would have been it. Leave a comment and let me know if you guys prefer to have mix and match coffee mugs or if you like them to be all matchy-matchy. So I had stopped picking up these beer steins quite a while ago. They weren't really selling well for me, but this one was very unique. It had Salt Lake City, Utah on it. You guys know I love the state souvenir pieces, so I did end up picking this up to resell or I'll just add it to my collection of state souvenirs. It's really neat. These are some really cool vintage 1993 Avon salt and pepper shakers. I liked how the little white doves were not exactly the same. One had their head kind of tilted back. Now they do have the red and green on them, which is usually an indication for Christmas, but I think they really could work year round where it's just a touch of that color. I thought they were really beautiful. Whenever I see these little miniature teacups, they always kind of crack me up because they're really adorable, but then when you think about the practicality of drinking tea out of one, I mean, you're not getting too much tea, so you would have to keep refilling it and refilling it. So, I don't know <laughs> if I would really want to have something like that, so I usually pass on those little miniature ones. I actually passed on purchasing these little bowls. They had the French vinaigrette and the Italian dressing. And I think those would have been really neat, actually. I like the idea of having dressing on the side for your salad, or you can use it as little bread dippers. I know at Italian restaurants I've been to before, and they would put a little bowl like that out and mix some olive oil with some spices and whatnot to dip your bread in. So you could probably do that with some kind of dressing with those as well. I could just kick myself for not picking up those beautiful Corel plates. They were in the pattern My Garden, and those were a plethora of salad plates. I really would have liked them just for my own personal collection, and I think I just got overwhelmed by the amount that was in the stack that I didn't even bother to just buy a few. They were only a dollar a piece. It's so silly of me to miss out on that. They had this lovely cornflower blue coffee pot with no lid for $25. So there was that. <laughs> and, and this is a beautiful Corningware piece in the pattern Wildflower. $4 was reasonable and I think I put it back because I saw some scratching on it that I did not like. And they had this wrong lid on a Pyrex divided dish. It was just a plain opalware dish. They were asking $15 for it still. I'm very curious as to if they had gotten a, the correct piece with that lid and if it had already sold, if it was out back still. I found this beautiful Corningware casserole. And I actually prefer to use the Corningware over the Pyrex. I do enjoy Pyrex, but I love to pick up the unique Corningware pieces. That pattern was called Summer Blush, and it was made from 1996 to 1998. These were a really cool find. Unfortunately, a few of them had some damage to them, so I only ended up picking up two. I think I shared them with you in my last video. They had a couple more on an end cap, so... I think these are the ones I passed on and I ended up picking the other two that were on the end cap because they are in better shape. But yeah, these are vintage Harker where 
cups and saucers. They're nice USA stoneware, and I think the set of two will do well. I'm considering keeping it, so I'm still on the fence there. I was so happy to find this Keechee Gorge Vermont Bell. I actually have been there before. I mean, my husband have gone to Vermont for a road trip and we absolutely love it there. The Keechee Gorge was, we both had vertigo when we tried to look down, we were on that bridge and we both realized we're not the best with heights, but we did experience it and it definitely made me smile when I came across this. And I will add it to our souvenir collection. I really love the colors of this rooster on the mug, but it wasn't particularly old. I was trying to decide if I wanted to still get it or not, but I ended up putting it back, especially when I spied this beautiful stoneware. I absolutely love this mug. It's likely from Japan, and the flowers have a little bit of dimension to them. Absolutely stunning. I do plan to hang on to that, so if you're hoping to purchase it, I'm sorry. I'm definitely hanging on to that for now. And this was so fun to see new in its package. This is from West Germany. These are the funny design candlestick holders. They made these in all kinds of really neat patterns. There's actually one in a blue bowed goose that I would love to get my hands on. So hopefully maybe one day I will find that. But these ones are all different birds and such a score at $6. I'll have to do a video and show you guys my collection of those because I just think they're really neat to collect. They're small and it's just nice to be able to collect something that's not too big, right? So it's really cute. There's a lot of different designs. I keep telling myself to stop looking at the mugs because I have plenty myself and it's not something that sells for too much money. It's not really a profitable thing to be getting into, but I can't help myself. I found that one and I was like, oh, well, I'll just glance. There might be some more cool ones. <laughs> and so I thought this one was kind of neat back here, but it surprisingly wasn't vintage. Doesn't this look vintage? It was such a fake out. <laughs> look at that. Made in China. So here comes the fun challenge of trying to get something on the bottom that you want with one hand, right? <laughs> I spied this really cool sign with the grapes on it. it says, God bless our home. And I was kind of nervous to see how heavy it might be. It is a newer piece, so it was super heavy, unfortunately. And I just, I just didn't really want to have to ship that. I've kind of ran out of space on my wall for something quite that large in my kitchen. Otherwise, I might have tried to get it for myself. But yeah, I ended up passing on that. I always really like to look at all of these vintage patterns. I thought that one was pretty fun with the clowns. <laughs> I try to find stuff from like the 70s or maybe the 50s and 60s that would be interesting like dresses and things that I would probably want to wear myself. I don't too often find any clothing that looks like something I would like, but I do like to look. And some people make some really interesting crafts just using the, you know, the covers here. So always interesting to see. I did end up purchasing this one because it was so 1970s. It was slightly ripped there, but I thought I might be able to tape that back and try to frame it. I thought it'd be really cool. I like the 1970s clothing. I finally found something that, you know, I would wear myself. <laughs> so I had to get that. You know how some people like to collect marbles or old game pieces and those gumball machines? I think thread would be kind of neat to collect as well because it's so colorful and vibrant. I like the ones with the old wooden spools on it. And they always have very interesting like labels and stuff. So yeah, I think that's something that would look very nice. I do like to sift through the crafting stuff. It's not something I'm super familiar with, so I don't know the worth of things. I try to just look for cool vintage labels and things like that. This appeared to be an older ribbon, but it wasn't very pretty, so I didn't end up picking that up. All right, so let's go ahead and check out everything that I end up purchasing today. I'll try to share the things I'm selling and what I'm keeping. I think I did pretty good. Let me know down in the comments what item I got today was your favorite or if it was something that I left behind. 
If you see anything you would like to purchase, I will link my Etsy shop down below and I have a live sale on Wednesday night, which some of these items might be in as well. So Wednesday night, 7.45 p.m. Eastern time is the time for my live sales. Thank you so much for watching. I super appreciate it and we will catch you in the next video. Bye.